Hello and welcome back to Women's Football Talk, the YouTube channel that brings you all the latest news and stories from around the world of women's football. And today we're going to look back at the action from the WSL this past weekend as we now head into an international break. So let's start off with Chelsea beating Brighton and Hove Albion by four goals to two. A fantastic game for Chelsea uh, pre-international break. A few changes to the lineup from Emma Hayes' side, but it just shows the depth that this team has uh, able to win by four goals to two. It was a fantastic performance from German midfielder Schurke Nushkin, who managed to bag herself a hat-trick. Absolutely fantastic performance from her, and she also managed to assist the fourth goal for Aggie Beaver Jones, who managed to score her first senior goal for Chelsea. So an absolutely perfect day for Emma Hayes' side, and they just looked absolutely class. And that was despite going a goal down uh, in the opening 10 minutes, Paulina Bremer, did port uh, Melissa Phillips's Bryson ahead. Uh, however, the lead lasted pretty much until half time, but Shurkin has managed to get that one just before the half. And then, uh, second half again, early goal from uh, Nushkin. And then, uh, the last 15 minutes or so, they managed to get a couple more goals before Elizabeth Turland did pull back a consolation goal in the 90th minute. But for Chelsea, absolutely stellar performance. I mean, the fact that they can win by such a big scoreline and none of their so-called known goal scorers of Sam Kerr, Lauren James, Frank Kirby can be on the score sheet. Uh, it shows that the depth that Emma Hayes' side has is absolutely crazy and it's just a uh, phenomenal stuff for them. I mean, as you expected and as I said on Friday, completely dominated the games in terms of possession, shots on target, total shots, everything was just in Chelsea's favour in that game and yeah they continue to show why they are one of the best teams in women's football and um, the results sees them climb up the table into second place joint on points with Manchester City who are at top of the table but a fantastic win for Chelsea heading into this international break. Speaking of Manchester City they also won on Saturday they beat Leicester City by one goal to nil. Chloe Kelly's first half goal was enough for Gareth Taylor's side to remain uh, at the top of the table. A lot harder of a game for um, them than what many probably had expected but it just shows the continual growth of Leicester City and once again Kiara Keaton in goal putting on a good performance and showing why she has been worthy of her senior England call up and yeah overall I think uh, Manchester City really starting to show teams and other people around the world uh, watching the WSL that they are serious title contenders this season not getting off to the slow start like we saw uh, a season ago but yeah continuing to shine uh, elsewhere Manchester United they managed to beat Everton by five goals to nil now uh, Mark Skinner side were plagued by uh, some players in the team having a sickness bug but that didn't stop them put in on a five goal show at Walton Hall Park uh, Melvin Millard opened the scoring for uh, Man United and then goals from Nikita Paris and Rachel Williams both scoring two each in the second half was enough for the Red Devils to get back to winning ways after dropping points in, uh, obviously not dropping points, going out of the Champions League uh, earlier on the week. For Everton, disappointing day at the office um, and they are really going to be hoping that uh, they can turn this fortune around uh, post the international break. Um, obviously, picking up the uh, win in the Merseyside derby uh, before the Manchester United game was obviously key for them but that was their only win of the season so far and uh, going into an international break having conceded five goals is never good but obviously there's also the fact that they have a few players out injured as we mentioned on our podcast women's football talk podcast uh, you can get that from all podcasting sites uh, so do check on that but yeah very disappointing uh, weekend for Everton another team have been a uh, continual disappointment is Aston Villa. This time they lost 4 2 to Tottenham Hotspur. They did take the lead in this one early on. Rachel Daly converting from the penalty spot, but uh, the joy wasn't to be lasted for the rest of the first half. As uh, 20 minutes or so later, Martha Thomas pulled one back, and that was just the start of the Martha Thomas show. Uh, just before half time, Ashley Neville pulled. 
uh, Spurs ahead and then in the second half Martha Thomas scored uh, two more goals to get a hat-trick to make it five goals in five for her since moving to Tottenham in this summer which is absolutely fantastic and how quickly she settled into this team like I said uh, in the preview, the way she, Olga Arten and uh, Grace Clinton have all settled into this uh, team under a new management of Robert Wilhelm um, is just absolutely fantastic. But for Aston Villa, uh, still winless this season, still yet to pick up a point, 10 goals conceded. Could be a bit of worrying times for Carla Wardside, but fortunately for them, after the international break, both Kirsty Hansen, uh, who is back from suspension, and Kenta Daly, who should be back fit from injury so maybe that can give them a bit of a much needed boost uh, returning to uh, the fold for Aston Villa. Speaking of returning to the pitch and it was a welcome back only for a couple of minutes though for Vivian Miedema this past weekend as Arsenal played Bristol City in a game that finished 2-1 to Arsenal. Katie McKay once again scoring a banger to open the score in for Arsenal however the lead lasted only about seven or eight minutes before Rachel Furness drew Bristol City level with a header and then just before the hour mark Katie McCabe sealed all three points for Arsenal. Uh, a game that they really dominated uh, 25 shots to Bristol City's one, 10 shots on target to Bristol City's one but they just weren't able to put more of their chances past uh, Bristol City's defence and uh, Olivia Clark that was in goal for uh, the Bristol City side so really tough day for Arsenal but managing to get the win is all that matters in the end and then obviously being able to welcome back Fifine Minimal even if it was just for a few minutes or so back from her ACL injury 11 months later is absolutely fantastic and going for Fiona side of our side will be uh, very happy with that and it's going to be interesting to see over the coming weeks when she's fully back uh, fit and not having to be so much on a minutes restriction is what I'm expecting over the next couple of weeks. Um, to have her back fully integrated in the squad will give Arsenal good uh, depth up top. And then finally, West Ham United and Liverpool played out a 1-1 draw. Marie Horbinger uh, scored on 52 minutes for Matt Beard's side and it looked like it would stay that way for pretty much the rest of the game. However, in the 95th minute of I think about 6 or 7 added on, Rico Ueki uh, pulled one back for West Ham and yeah, earned the Hammers a point and that was her first goal since her summer move and that result sees West Ham into 8th place and Liverpool fall down to 6th following Manchester United's win this weekend. So a quick look at the WSL table heading into this international break. We've got Manchester City at top on 10 points, Chelsea a level but uh, behind Man City on goal difference. Tottenham are in third with nine points, Man United in fourth on eight points. Then we've got three teams on seven points, those being Leicester, Liverpool and Arsenal. West Ham on four points in eighth place. Brighton and Everton both on three points in ninth and tenth respectively. And then Aston Villa and Bristol City bringing up the table both on zero points. Uh, and we'll be hoping after this international break that they can pick up their first set of points. Right, that is it. We will be, uh, like I said earlier, we have a podcast. Uh, we'll be speaking more in depth on the whole WSL weekend and any talking points from uh, the women's game. So make sure you check that out. Women's Football Talk podcast on all podcast sites. And to stay up to date with all the latest news and stories from around the world of women's football, make sure you follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Just search Women's Football Talk and you'll find us there. In the meantime, we'll see you soon.